Football, or in some cases soccer, is the most played sport on the African continent. From the streets to the modern stadiums, using an actual ball or one made out of plastic bags, the sport has brought people together and changed lives altogether. Do you play football? Anyways, here are the footballers of Africa. Like, subscribe and share please to help us. Thanks and enjoy. According to history, football was introduced to Africa during colonization in the 1860s. And fast forward to today, the much-loved sport brings people together, creates global stars and generates money for countries. But let's look at it exclusively on the continent. Everyone will have their list of the greatest football players from the continent. However, there will always be four names on everyone's list. They are George Weah, Abedi Pele, Roger Miller and Samuel Eto'o. George Weah from Liberia is the only African player to win the Ballon d'Or and the retired FIFA World Player of the Year. He is also regarded as the best player to never play at the World Cup or win a Champions League while his jersey number was retired. He is also currently the president of Liberia. Abedi Pele from Ghana was an attacking midfielder that did win the Champions League and is one of the first Africans to make an impact on European club football and once had the most appearances at the African Cup of Nations, dominating African football for over a decade. Roger Miller is a pioneer for African football as he can be regarded as the first superstar from Africa. And the funny thing is he achieved this status when he was approaching 40. He played in three World Cups and scored memorable goals, making him the oldest goal scorer in the history of the World Cup competition. If you want to see the history of Africa at the World Cup, you can click on the top right link to see the full-length dramatic take on Africa on the biggest footballing stage, filled with conspiracies, black magic and crazy stories. He was not as prolific in his club career, however in his last two seasons in the Indonesian league, he scored 41 goals in 35 games. Then there's a modern legend Samuel Leto, who most people can remember. Just look at his accomplishments. He is a three-time Champions League winner, one of the first to do it in two different clubs consecutively, a four-time La Liga champion, a Serie A champion, winning all the League Cups in both Spain and Italy, an Olympic gold medalist, a two-time AFCON winner, AFCON's all-time goal scorer, Cameroon's all-time goal scorer, five-time African Player of the Year, one-time top assist provider and was even one of the highest paid football players on earth. After his retirement, Eto has stuck to a career in football as he is right now the president of the Cameroonian Football Association. Other players noteworthy of being the best are Juan Kokanu, Didier Drogba, JJ Okocha, Sadio Mane, Mohamed Salah, Yaya Toure or Hussam Hassam. Let us know your list in the comments below. That should be interesting. When it comes to the continental and organized football, North and West Africa are the dominant regions. The CAF Champions League, which is Africa's equivalent to the UEFA Champions League, has been dominated especially by Egyptian clubs, with Al Ali being the greatest team in the competition, winning it a record 11 times and being runners up also a record 5 times. North African nations generally have better structured domestic leagues, leaving many players preferring to play locally than searching for a career in Europe. South Africa has the best structured league system in Sub-Saharan Africa, with teams like Mamelodi Sundowns, Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates luring players from all over Africa to play for these legacy clubs. When it comes to continental football, AFCON is the pinnacle of international football competition, happening every two years. It generally occurs at the beginning of the year, which European clubs do not favour as many of the teams lose their African players for months. Samuel Eto'o has scored the most goals in the tournament and Rigobert Song is the most talented individual in the competition. However, Egypt once again is the most successful and accomplished team, winning the African Cup of Nations a record seven times, followed by Cameroon, Ghana and Nigeria. Egypt has also won the competition three consecutive times. However, continental greatness does not always lead to global domination, as Egypt has only qualified for the FIFA World Cup three times, even though they were the first team to represent Africa on the grand stage. The greatest country in the World Cup would be Cameroon, as they have qualified for the World Cup the most, and were the first team to reach the quarterfinals before Senegal and eventually Morocco, who recently did better by reaching the semi-finals in Qatar last year. Nigeria has the highest FIFA ranking ever for an African team, ranking fifth in 1994, but so much has changed since. South Africa is also noteworthy on the international stage as they are currently the only African team to host the World Cup, which memorably happened in 2010. However, Morocco will be the second country to host the World Cup with Portugal and Spain. Currently, Morocco is the highest ranked African team on FIFA's list at 13, while Somalia is the lowest team, ranked at 196. When it boils down to the individual footballers, most of Africa's footballers in Europe are from Senegal, Nigeria and Morocco, though most of the players in Europe come from West Africa. In Europe, the league with the most African footballers is League 1, 
with the Premier League surprisingly coming behind the Portuguese and Turkish leagues. Over 70 African footballers currently play in the MLS, with most players from West Africa. Even though there's a bigger representation of Southern and Eastern Africans playing in the MLS, there are over 40 African players playing in the emerging Saudi Pro League, while hundreds are playing in the Chinese Super League. How do these players spread out when it comes to international duty? Funny enough, a good amount of footballers had a choice between different countries, but remain where they are today for varying reasons. Notable players like Kylian Mbappe could have played for Cameroon or Algeria, and Sufati could have played for Guinea-Bissau. This list of players is so long it could never be covered in one video, so we'll just show you. Feel free to pause the video. Conversely, in the opposite direction, Pepe could have played for France, Hakimi could have played for Spain. However, that list is not as big as the previous list. Then there are those who played for more than one country at different times in their lives, like Wilfried Zaha, who played for England before Ivory Coast, or Khalidou Kanubali, who played for France before representing Senegal. Pierre Aubameyang was invited to play for Italy, but played for France before switching to Gabon. Do you remember when the Boateng brothers played on opposing teams of their parents' nationalities? Lastly, one funny name that sticks out is Ross Barkley, who could have played for Nigeria due to parental lineage. His grandfather was Nigerian. Looking closely, one would also see that most of the players coming are from North or mainly West Africa. Why is this? While there is no concrete explanation, it's clear that North Africa's close proximity to Europe allows them to adopt the European organizational structure of football and keep many of their players in local leagues. While in West Africa, there have been claims to the popularity of the sport and the genetics of the West Africans, contributing to their success in representing European clubs. These regions have a larger population and a higher concentration of urban areas, which allows for more opportunities for people to play and watch football. Additionally, many countries in these regions have invested in their football infrastructure, such as building new stadiums and training facilities, while partnerships with the European clubs have happened, as opposed to the rest of Africa. Random fact, an East African nation is yet to qualify for the World Cup. When it comes to the women, the masculine nature of the game has made it open to competition from track and field, netball and handball. However, the Nigerian football team is the most successful one on the continent, winning the Women's African Cup of Nations 11 times and progressing the furthest in the 1999 edition of the FIFA Women's World Cup. So yeah, that's much of what can be said about football on the continent. And if you're watching, let us know what we missed or who your goat is. Thanks for watching. Will we see you in the next one?